I'm Aaron and welcome to the Sleep Society. In this tutorial series, I'm going to take you through my approach to filmmaking and show you how to be a content creator in a band. I'm going to show you the gear that I use, how to create content on tour, my general post-production workflow, how to create online assets for social media, Premiere Pro and After Effects tips and tricks, and much more. So today I'm going to talk you through the gear that I use, past and present. I'm going to show you what I started out with, leading up to what I use today. So I got into filmmaking around about 2015, and it started when we were signed to Sony during the Brainwashed album. They sent us out some little care packages, and in that care package was a, a little Sony action cam. The, at that time, Instagram were only allowing 15 second videos. It was pre the everybody having a videographer on tour age. We're putting together 15 second clips of each show. I just literally put it in the corner, put it on a cab. Like I'd, some, some nights I'd tape it to like the balcony. At the start of our band's career, we had Tom Welsh on board with us. And he's an amazing filmmaker. And he was with us right from the very start. And he shot our first music video. He's pretty much shot every one of our music videos bar like two or three. We had him on the road with us from the very start. And we were kind of ahead of the curve, I think. It wasn't pre-social media, but we were putting out content pretty regularly. Um, putting out tour diaries and tour episodes and just, just general documentaries. Like way before most bands in our genre were doing that. He got to the point where Tom's skills outweighed us not being able to pay him and he got a lot of paid jobs from other people and he ended up leaving us. So we set a, a pretty high standard when Tom was out with us and you know releasing so much regular content and when we lost him I kind of just started to try filling that void that was left where it wasn't coming out with us anymore. In the beginning it wasn't very good but um, it was content that to put out regardless and eventually it's led to me being this full-time filmmaker you know and I'm starting to do like music videos for other bands and and it's getting to the point where, where I've got a little side business now. I get paid to create content and create adverts and shoot music videos for other bands and businesses, which is amazing. So I think what we should get into now is the gear that I started investing in after the Sony Action Cam. The first camera that I bought where you could have interchangeable lenses was the A6500. And this is an amazing camera. Uh, the 4K resolution on this is amazing. It downgrades from 6K. Um, and it compresses it into a 4K image. It's beautiful. And I used to have the Sigma 16 millimeter and the Sigma 30 millimeter with this. And honestly, in a band situation, this is really, that's really all you need. This is the camera that really stepped up my game in terms of quality. I've shot a music video on this thing. It's a really powerful camera for the price tag on it. It's got in-body stabilization. It can shoot 120 frames a second at 1080p. It can shoot up to 30 frames a second at 4K. And honestly, if you're just, putting stuff on social media, you don't really need to shoot more than 1080p because Instagram and all social media platforms are just gonna compress the image anyways. Haunt Me was also shot on this camera. Haunt Me is a stop motion video. Any scene that we shot on Haunt Me, it was just me with the, this camera on burst mode and then I stitched all the pictures together in post. For the price tag and for the quality of this camera, I would say this is a pretty good investment. The next camera I invested in was the Fuji X-T3. This is such a powerful camera for how small it is. It shoots at 4K up to 60 frames a second at 10 bit. The A6 6500 shoots in 8-bit and you really can tell like the jump up in image quality and how far you can push the colors. I've shot many music videos on this just because it is that much of a good quality camera that you can you can shoot a music video on it no problem and you can really get a stylized look in the grade. Tom Welsh owned one of these a few years ago too and most of the Guilty Party music video was shot on this camera. All the parts that were shot in Asia was filmed on the X-T3. I still use this today and yeah, it's amazing. The next camera I invested in after that is the Blackmagic Pocket Camera 6K. This is such an unbelievable camera for the price point as well, and it's very aptly named because this really is a camera the size of most DSLRs, and it can compete with cinema cameras that are worth like quadruple the amount. It's such an amazing camera. This can shoot 6K, 50 frames a second at 12-bit RAW, which is just absolutely ridiculous. You can pretty much stylize the grade uh, and push the grade as much as you want in post-production. And it's just, yeah, it's such an unbelievable camera. The 6K footage is just so clean. It's just so good. This is pretty overkill if you're just wanting to use this as a social media camera, honestly. Like, it's a 6, 6K camera is just way too much. And any social media platform is just gonna compress that image anyway. But 
I got this camera just because I'm shooting a lot of music videos and a lot of like higher end stuff for our band and other bands. Um, I use this to shoot all the narrative for Sleep Society music video. I would only invest in this if you are planning to use it for like music videos for your own band and stuff like that. Also has 13 stops of dynamic range, so yeah, you're just getting a lot of image out of this camera. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is stabilization. Stabilization is very important if you want to up the production value look to your footage. A lot of people associate the look of a steady shot with being high production, just because, you know, back in the day, to get a steady shot, you had to hire a team and get a track down and get a dolly, and, you know, it cost a lot of money and it'd take a lot of time. Now we have things like gimbals where you can just throw your camera on it and you're away and set, and you can not really have to think about it too much. And especially when you have cameras like at the higher end, like the Blackmagic 6K doesn't have in-body stabilization. So using the gimbal can really boost that production value look at a lower cost and at a consumer level. So I was kindly sent out this gimbal. It is the Xeon Crane 2S by Xeon. And uh, yeah, this is a highly professional intuitive gimbal. It's got a powerful three axis stabilization system and it is designed for the, the heavier DSLR cameras and the heavier cinema cameras. And you're gonna be able to balance it on this, no problem. The thing I really like about this gimbal is that you can lock off each axis and it just means like if you're carrying it around, if you're taking it from home straight to a shoot, it just means like you can have it pretty much already set up already. And if you're carrying it, it's just not swaying around. Just small things like this just really help. If this didn't have the locking system and you're just carrying it around to the shoot, it's just all over the place. So those locking off mechanisms really, it's really help. And it's really quite light to say the payload that it offers up. Like I said, it can take the, the heavier DSLR cameras and the heavier cinema cameras, but in itself is pretty light. So don't really know how they're doing that. It's, that's pretty amazing. Another amazing feature of this gimbal is that it's got vertical mode. And that means that you can attach your camera to the side of it pretty easily with the quick release plate. And then you're just ready to go and shoot portrait. And this is an amazing feature. You know, if you're shooting stuff for social media, a lot of the times now when you're putting stuff on Instagram stories, everything is in portrait mode that's just an amazing way just to shortcut just getting your camera in that vertical position just so you can have stabilized footage in portrait mode which is amazing because before we had to mess around with getting cages and stuff for for our cameras so we could attach it in the bottom but just being able to go between vertical mode and the regular mode is just it's just amazing it's so, so quick and so efficient being on the road and shooting on the road, usually you, you're gonna have to charge your batteries overnight and then you're setting up your stuff and then you're just shooting all day. And having to charge your batteries like halfway through the day is just a massive inconvenience. That's why this gimbal's pretty fucking cool because it's got a, a 12 hour battery life and that means you can just set it up at the start of the day shoot everything during the day and it's going to last you until the show in the, in the evening. The main reason they sent me this gimbal out is because it's got a really wide base plate that's actually adjustable. So you can make it as wide as you like. Now that I have the Blackmagic 6K, it's almost like it was designed for this camera. The Blackmagic is a really, really wide camera and if you're wanting to put a cage on it as well, it just makes it even wider. Like this has been the, a, a really big issue for this camera since it came out is that people are having like massive trouble of fitting it and balancing it on gimbals. And with the Xeon Crane 2S is absolutely no problem whatsoever. So I use a wide variety of lenses. Uh, the main one that I use 90% of the time is the Sigma Canon EF mount 1.8, 18 millimeter to 35 millimeter. Can't say enough good things about this lens. It is incredibly sharp and having the f-stop at 1.8 throughout the entire focal range is a blessing. It's literally like having three prime lenses in one lens. Uh, that's why I literally just never take it off my camera. Even if you're wanting to get like super tight macro shots, you can get really close and still pull focus. Honestly, I don't even need another lens if, I, if I've got this one. Yeah, I originally got this to go on my Fuji um, and I got an adapter to go on that. So it, because this is EF mount and uh, Fuji is an X mount. So I got an adapter so it would fit on there. Now I use it on my Blackmagic 6K and it just, because the 6K is in the EF mount, it fits right on there. Also, if when I use my Fuji X-T3, I've got a, a Samyang 12 millimeter. This is a really good wide angle lens and I use it for like prop it videos and stuff like that. This is an F2 as well. So yeah, it's, it's really good in low light. And because it's such a wide angle lens, usually these lenses distort around the side and this has zero distortion. It's actually advertised like that, so really good. So if you wanted to take your shots to the sky, um, this is what I use. I use a Mavic Pro. It's a Mavic Pro 1. They're, has been a second one that's come out, but 
This is more than enough. It shoots 4K up to 30 frames a second. This drone was also used on the Guilty Party music video. All the aerial shots that you see on that video are shot on this thing. This is a really good drone uh, for getting those 4K aerial shots. This is the monitor that I use. It's a Swift 4K, and this is just really good just for getting your monitor in situations and places where your camera monitor is not gonna be able to go. So you can mount this at the top of the camera and like tilt it back, or you can place it on a magic arm on the gimbal and just have it in, in a place that's comfortable for you to view it. This comes with built-in LUTs. So yeah, that's pretty cool. For audio for my footage, I just use this shotgun mic. It's by Boyer and uh, yeah, it's amazing. Like a lot of the times in like interview setups, I use a lapel mic as well. That is also Boyer, but um, I find that this has a little more body and a little more sub to it. Um, and for the price point as well, I think I got this for like 30 pounds and honestly, I've used it for about two and a half years now and yeah, it gets the cleanest audio and it's really nice and very little editing is done to this afterwards. So yeah, definitely would highly recommend this. And finally, I'm gonna talk about lighting. So for any studio or any like controlled environment kind of setups, uh, I'll use these Studio Fresnel lights. These are 300 watt and yeah, these do me just fine, really. But for any, literally anything else, um, I use these Viltro or Viltrox, don't know the name. These are great for portability and you can just take these out with you at any situation if you need them to add light and they just take battery and you're not restricted to finding a power source. I've got two of these, yeah, they're great. I'm not gonna dive in right now to the importance of lighting, but I will be doing a separate episode on lighting itself. So that is it on what gear that I use. I hope that offered some insight and I hope that helped you figure out what you wanna do for your future potential setups. Next episode, I'm gonna be talking about how to create content on tour while being in a band and all the tips and tricks involved with that. If you've got anything else you'd like me to dive more into, just let me know in the comments below. See you on the next one.